Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the linear supply equation. So here the problem is back to tomatoes, but instead of thinking about the demand, we're thinking about the supply. So we can see that if tomatoes sell for $1 per pound, farmers will produce enough for one pound per customer per week. But then for each additional dollar increase per pound, farmers will produce an additional one pound for each customer per week. And so what we're trying to do here is find the equation that describes that and then also graph that equation. So I think let's start with graphing. Start with for $1 a pound, this is dollars, this is the price, this is the supply, we'll provide one pound per customer. So it's right here. For each $1 increase, we'll supply one additional pound. So for $2, we'll supply two pounds. For $3, we'll supply three pounds. For $4, four pounds. For $5, five pounds, and so forth. Of course, here we can see the dilemma that typically in real life, this is not a linear curve because eventually there's a limit as to how much suppliers will, will provide. And at some point, suppliers will not provide anything and way before you get to zero dollars. At a half a dollar per pound, it may just not be worth it to supply any tomatoes because growers cannot grow and make a profit on a half dollar per pound, so there will be zero supply, even though our curve here would not indicate that. Our curve would indicate that the price would have to go all the way down to zero for zero production to take place. So really, you can see that it tends to be a nonlinear curve, but for the middle part of the curve, a straight line equation does a pretty good approximation of the situation, so it's actually a pretty valid way of looking at things. So let's go ahead and connect all these dots. So we can see that we have a straight line. If we go continue that over here, we can see that the intercept is at zero. And so if we want to find the equation, we have a y equals mx plus b, x representing the number of pounds being supplied and y representing the price. So we can say that price as a function of x is equal to the slope times x plus b. Now in this case, we can see that b is equal to zero. So that drops out. So we have p as a function of x is equal to the slope m times x plus zero. And I'll just go ahead and say plus zero here. So you can see that b was replaced by zero. And now the slope. The slope would be the rise over the run. So the rise would be one dollar. The run would be one pound. So the slope m, slope, which is equal to the rise over the run, in this case, that would be equal to the rise of $1 per one pound, LB for pound, and $1, the rise over the run, a positive one. So we can see that the price as a function of X, X being the supply, is equal to 1X, and then the plus zero, of course, drops out. And there it is. X being the supply, so you raise the price by one, the supply goes up by one. And that's what we call, in this case, the supply equation, and it's a linear equation, according to the equation y equals mx plus b. And that is how it's done. I like tomatoes. They're some of my favorite vegetables. That's why I like to use tomatoes in my examples. <laughs> Especially ripe tomatoes right off the vine. Delicious. I know you don't do too much rice. No, no, rice is not my favorite. Tomatoes? Tomatoes. Potatoes? Potatoes. 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 <laughs>